by interesting time there. All right, uh, let's uh, get started right away. I uh, have with me Mr. Charles uh, Fakroha, uh, business analyst and of course an investment banker. Uh, always a pleasure to have you on Business Breakfast. Now, let's look at some of these stories. Thank you for joining us once again. Thank you, Frank, for having me. Well, um, maybe let me start from perhaps the Twitter issue, maybe. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> because that, I think we should start from Twitter issue. Okay. Um, looking at this deal, because immediately um, that announcement was made. I know the, the, the prices of uh, the price share went yes. up, yeah. uh, you know, and that was quite a, a yeah, high If I even rose from about $30 per share mm -hmm. to what we have currently like about um, 54, 54, yeah, 54, 54 yeah. Yes. So, so, what, so what, how do you address this? Because now Musk is pulling out and uh, Twitter say, no, you can't pull out at this time. Yeah. No, you will know that initially when this got to the news, there was an agreement signed by Elon Musk and Twitter. Yes. A major, a binding agreement mm. that if either party wants to leave he will pay i think about one million dollars or something like that right okay now elon has signed that agreement fine that means he knows that if he's going to pull out he's going to pay that um, amount that of amount. money now but again that does not stop him from doing due diligence about a company he wants to acquire right again there are security laws in implication here now an announcement is in the public domain the price of Twitter shares has started going up. Now, if he pulls out, then there's a penalty for him. Mm. And of course, there is an implication, there's an implication on the price share. On the price share. Mm. Now, can we now say there is a bit of market manipulation? I would say no. Because that information is in the public domain. Everybody got that As information. So investors who may want to act on that. Act on that, mm. which is normal. Now, but he is now saying... I want to pull out because there were issues. I asked certain information. You're not giving it to me. Like the spam account, you know, he's talking about. And he's also, okay, no problem. Let's go to court. Probably the courts will now say, okay, they will force Twitter to give him all the necessary information he's looking for. And I think it is better they go to court to resolve the issue. Mm. But I still want him to go through that deal. Because it's obvious, he's serious about it. Because if he's not serious about it, he will not go ahead to sign, to sign the deal that in the first place. Well, yes. well, let's look at the implications here. Uh, I mean, um, the, the, the prices of, I mean, the share price went up immediately. Yes. That announcement, uh, you know, was in the public domain. Yeah. Uh, I know how investors may want to take, you know, seriously information as, as such course. as that. Uh, but now that he's pulling out, what do you think is the implication? Let's assume... He pulls out finally, and he's no longer interested. Would that impact negatively on the price share of Twitter? It, it depends on how you're looking at it now. Yeah. yeah, it could be positive. It could also be negative. Look at investors now who cash in at the initial price of about thirty dollars. If um, one is advising them, it's okay. It's already done fifty-four. Why not cash out? That's for short-term investors. However, for the real investors, that is the Average investor who just want to have right. Twitter shares based on what Twitter has been doing. That's an, an implication for them. And they want pulling out now at this stage. Uh, it's a drop. It's a drop. It it will drop. It, it will drop the prices. It will drop the prices. Price. Yes, yeah, it will drop the price. Mm, mm. And but, that is a negative implication for those who have not um, taken advantage to exit. Mm. But I, I'm sure in, initially when. It, um, just to dwell, but I mean, let's wrap it up with this one now. Initially, when to, uh, Elon Musk came on board, yeah. and, and the, the agreement, or perhaps what part of the discussion or or the conversation was that they were going to review, uh, you know, the privacy and some buttons exactly. and features yes. along this ar around this social, you know, platform. But yes. then, if what Elon Musk is asking for, I mean, if it's in the best interest of people and it will not intrude the privacy of the users of these social media platforms. I mean, what stops the, I mean, Twitter CEO or the investor, I mean, the shareholders yes. from agreeing the, the to the of Twitter, yes. Mm. And, and that's on the one side. And yes. the other side is that, of course, um, 
paying one billion or one million dollars yes. uh, tweet, uh, from te uh, uh, as a compensation <laughs> for okay. all of these for, for pulling out yeah for pulling out <laughs> I, I think would you, do you think it will really impact on the wealth of Elon Musk because I know that he's really really wealthy it will not impact on that him. may not mean much to him yes it will not impact on him. and that's why we are saying fine he wants this information mm -hmm. and the current Twitter management don't want to release so let it go to court so let the court be the final habitat because as a public quoted company investors want to know all the information concerning that company and for elon Musk, he wants to buy and he has a right to know everything concerning that company so the current management should not keep anything for him interesting anyway let's uh, move to the next one here okay. uh, i mean <laughs> Okay, I think we we'll have to go come back home now. Look at the name registration story. Lagos Cano, you know, top enrollment, uh, which now around 85.59 million. Let, let's look at your assessment. Let's start from there. What's the assessment of this process, of this exercise so far? It's been, um, well, I say it, it took a lot of uh, time and processes, energy, you know, investment, time went into it. How successful, how successful do you think this, pro, this exercise has been so far? Yes, I must first of all congratulate um, Nigerians for their doggedness in trying to see that they get this their national ID card, they are registered. We saw all the issues that were involved. Even during the COVID period, we saw people, you know, flooding the NIMC office to see that they get registered and all the issues and all that, you know, and of course, we also saw what SEC was doing, if your, your, your phone number is not linked and all that. And looking at the figures now, about 85.59 million people right. registered you know, as of July 7th. I think it's, um, it's a good development. And it, 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 it shows that, yes, Nigerians are gradually becoming to take certain things serious. However, it's not good to wait till, you know, at a point they said they want to stop, you know, and all that. And we saw the rush, you know. But for me, I think for NIMSI, it should be an ongoing exercise. Because if I'm correct, for you to get that identity, you must be of age 18 years. And we know on a daily basis, people become 18. Mm. So it should be on an, an ongoing exercise, exercise. So that once you are 18, you can now go and register seamlessly and have your identity card. Again, for planning and other election purposes, we are now saying that rightly in Lagos, or generally in Nigeria now, we have over 85 million people who have identity cards. Mm. So, and they are over 18. So that can begin to give INEC and other political stakeholders that this is the eligible voters. voters. You know, getting this data from another government uh, agency. Yes. So I think um, with time, we begin to see regularity mm. in terms of figures that will be coming out. Now that you <laughs> talked about this now, I mean, how important this figure is, of course, to the election as well. Uh, then we also need to talk about the issue of harmonization between these agencies uh, who are involved in data collation, data taking and capturing of citizens' data as well. INEC is one. Uh, you also have some other... Um, road safety, road safety, immigration. Yeah. You know, you have all of them. All of so, them. when do you think we can start the conversation around harmonisation exercise, such that we do not have to have duplications of, of this such function? Uh, function. I think, Frank, we should have started twenty years ago to harmonise this data. Right. When we decide the best time to plant a tree twenty years ago, the second best time is now. So we should start that discussion now. I don't see any reason why NIMC and INEC immigration cannot harmonize. So that once you have the 18, you have the ID card, then automatically these other agencies can just start from it and they have your data. And it's as simple as, simple as possible. Mm. Very seamless. Because I, one would thought that, look, if you have 85 million Nigerians who are enrolled now, yes. so sexual, we have them, yes, we have them captured, and they yes. have their name now. So you could begin to think along this way and say, look, these people, those who are up to, um, you know, 
eligible voting to age, vote yes. voting age, you can automatically produce their PVC That's and it. ask them to go and um, you know take it at their maybe their exactly. <laughs> locations exactly. or local government. It's as simple and, and as all that. Of that. So they that don't you can need. have a yes. seamless process. Very simple. Mm. But how 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 far do you think we can? I mean. Um, do you think we can start? You say we can start now, but yes. then, of course, who is to lead conversation in this? Is it the NIMSI? Is it um, uh, just interest group within the Nigerian society? Or, because when you talk about this kind of conversation, people want to look at, okay, who should start the conversation in the first place? Yes, first of all, I think the civil society organization should start it. Mm. The media, people like you, should also start it. And of course, the agencies that are involved. Right. They should begin to look at it. And it is for the good of everybody. It is for the improvement of Nigeria. And it, like I've said, it becomes so seamless. Yes, if you want to borrow from advanced climb, I think they're already doing such a thing. Right. So we need to begin to follow that direction and make things easy for everybody mm. in the country. Let's move to the next story now, which is talking about the crude oil production and, uh, of course, <laughs> the output for Nigeria. Although this report talked about the fact that the output has increased, increased to 1.23 million in okay. June. Yeah. Although this is below the actual quota allocated to Nigeria, which is around 1.7 uh, million. So look at the gap. That's over, mm. you know, 500 thousand <laughs> still left behind in terms of shortfall in our output production so it's still there so how do you think um okay maybe i should allow you to even comment on the june uh is it a f is it fair enough giving the 1.238 million barrels per day output against the 1.7 is it fair enough okay that, that was that was an increase well you know when it comes to crude oil production generally yeah the nigerian economy we all agree that crude plays a major role in our economy. That's right. And of course, like I don't want to use the word, I would say Nigeria is a monoproduct country. That's the only thing we sell, you know. Now, it's, it's, it's frightening because this is your main product that you even sell. The quota that is allocated to you, you can't even beat up. Mm. Then how are we going to generate enough revenue? Because if you, your output will determine your revenue. Why are we talking about of, of where the issues of thefts, crude oil thefts? So when government officials will speak, at first we're told that vandals, pipeline vandals and all that, but we have now seen that it is not even these vandals. It is organized criminality. We talk of crude oil theft. Well, we're happy. We can see the figures have increased. That means the government is already doing something to check that um, crude oil theft. But we still need to do more to meet the mm. OPEC quota that we are at least meet. We even seen countries who even begin to pressurize OPEC. Please allow us to go above our quota. But of course, they have to stabilize the price. That is why OPEC is there as uh, a cartel to ensure the stability of um, the price of crude so that each producing nation will get the benefit from the product God has given to them. Okay, um, I mean the the, the issue of um, you know because when you talk about the fact that it's going to affect revenue, of course, you talk about the fact that okay, the government uh, also gave a skew of about oil theft. Uh, they also talked about the, the vandalism as well. Yeah. Um, going forward, how do you think this can be addressed, really? Because some people are concerned now. If we have identified that this is an organized crime, yeah. then it means that the government shouldn't be, you know, out of clue or, or what to do to address the issue. Yes, again, it boils down to leadership, you know, because we are told that when the music changes, the dance step will also change. It's an indictment on the security agencies and even the government. Mm. If you are telling us that there is crude oil theft. Crude oil, you need people to be involved in that crime. It's not one person. You need a lot of people. You need technology. And those products, the way they are being carried from point A to point B, is not hidden. So what are we talking about? Mm. It's laughable to say the government will not be aware or you can't track 
this crude oil term. No. So, so immediately, technology will be useful. In technology that. will be useful mm. to, track to track this the movement the of movement this, of this of product. Crude. It's as mm. simple as that. Mm. Ah. And of course, the security agencies involved in providing security for these operations, of course, should be a special trained force already existing, mm. but they should be monitored closely. All right. Uh, I think we should need to take the last story, which is okay. uh, the, the commodity market now, okay. the gold, <laughs> of course. Um, where you hear gold, uh, people want to believe that, okay, it's a safe, safe heaven. Uh, but then, of course, the concern is that it's also very volatile. Uh, yeah. Now, the, the question is, why gold prices are still falling uh, despite high inflation? Because during inflation, people use gold as a, as a safe heaven. Yeah. But then... It's still, it's still falling. So what would you address? Um, I mean, how would you address this? What can you say is responsible for the fact that, yes, instead of being a heaven now, we're seeing gold declining uh, from as far as um, 7,800 to 7, uh, 1,000, sorry, 7, well, $1,722 now. Yes, you, that's, that shows that the, even the global economy is not right. There are a lot of problems in the global, the uh, U, Ukraine, Russia, and um, crisis is still ongoing it is there and of course you know the, the dollar is the currency for gold and you know when the dollar is high of course that makes the price of that commodity also very expensive for those who are using other currency to buy that uh, product for, for me i just believe that um, people who are dealing in gold yes do your little research very well to ensure that um, once you want to use gold as a safe haven ensure you have balanced your portfolio very well because for me it's just one commodity that you have in your portfolio to balance it so that whether the price of gold is going up or it's coming down your portfolio will not be adversely affected mm. let's look at um, i mean nigeria for instance um we have gold but it's just that that particular sector has not been properly explored as it were what you suppose is wrong because we have gold in zamfara and then there, uh, there was a time news broke that the government in zamfara was also uh, you know uh, perhaps involved in mining instead and that of course is on exclusive list of yeah. the federal government yes again you can't i mean you were here you saw what happened cbn getting involved and all that you know again i want to put it on leadership mm. transparency and I think I've said here on this platform. Because I'm wondering how well are we exploring, you know, this commodity very well, which is, of course, it's, it's, it's a scarce commodity. Uh, we are not the, exploring the it very well. We are not. It's part of the solid mineral. You mentioned Zafra. Even in Shei, we have mm -hmm. gold there. Okay? So, again, just like we have done for crude oil, let us also follow the same print. You said exclusive lists. You need to grind license. They call it OPL oil prospecting license now it will be maybe gold prospecting license so that anybody you are giving that license will be regulated by the government so that they meet all the environmental mm. conditions you not just to mine the products and make the money but right. you must have an environmental impact assessment studies so the government has to do that using the ministry of solid mineral so that mm. at the end of the day we will not destroy the environment mm. and at the same time and then we will have the value accountability yes, and sir. value for that uh, product god has given to us i think we should leave it there uh, mr charles fakroha it's a business analyst and investment banker thank you for joining us on business breakfast thank you frank you're still watching business breakfast coming to you live from us this year we'll take a moment and still to come after the break in nigeria's population and seven other countries to make up more than half of global population increase by 2050. This is according to UN recent data. So what are the implications of the growing population as Nigeria continues to grapple with basic economic needs? With us, our next talking point, this is Business Breakfast.